All right, thank y'all for tuning in once again. Y'all already know what it is. And uh, we back on it one more time. And I got a whole lot of information to share with y'all today. As always. As always. All right, so as y'all can see, we had Domino. Okay, Domino is any of 28 small oblong pieces marked with zero to six spots called pips in each half all right so two and eight that's ten all right a blown pieces right that's basically like an oval shape or you know like the, like the damn domino look all right so basically like a rectangle with no corners all right but it's normally Round it all the way around, all right? So now, when we get to dealing with numbers, we're gonna deal with uh, a few numbers right now, right? So we say COVID-19. So you know one plus nine is 10. So you, that's eight plus two, as far as like the dominoes go, right? Then we know we got the highest domino has 12 spots on it. All right, the highest domino has 12 spots. You know, one plus two is three. One plus two is three. All right, so that means we got one plus zero, that's one, you know, that's one, or just keep it at 10, right? So, let it say, one plus nine is 10, right? One plus two is three. 10 plus 3 is what? 13. All right. Then we know we got the 13 elite families. We got the 13 colonists. Got the 13 tribes. And then, you know, Jesus represented the number 13. It's for like being included with the disciples, right? So, then we got Pip. When you bust Pip all the way down to see what it is, okay, we know it means dots, right? But it can be broke down to Piper, which is like a internet musician. You understand what I'm saying? Like symbolic of a wind instrument. And, um, you know, wind instruments are related to like trumpets and stuff like that. So I'm tying that in the trump some kind of way. All right. Y'all see what I'm saying? Y'all see how that's going? And then, um, we talk about Piff, uh, we talk about uh, what a Peter the Piper. I haven't really looked that up, looked that up or whatever. And uh, Trump is also from Germany, which is also Dutch, right? Dutch, the Dutch, uh, 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 the Germans and the Netherlands is basically considered Dutch people. It's all like the same. The Dutch and uh, the Germans are like cousins. They're cousins. And that's where the name Trump comes from. All right, that's where the word, uh, let's see. That's where the word Piper comes from and all that, right? So now, let's get to this next definition, which we already know is the game played with domino pieces, right? In which they are laid down to form a line. Each player in turn trying to find and lay down a domino with a value matched by that of a piece at either end of the line already formed. Okay. So it's letting you know that things anyway, I ain't going I ain't going to tell part. We already know what that means though. But I'm trying to get down to this definition, right? This historical definition. It's loose cloak. Worn 
with a mask for the upper part of the face that masquerades. Okay? A loose cloak. That's like something like a priest wears, like a clergy, witches, popes, pastors, judges, and so on. All right? And then we know with masquerades and masks and stuff like that, you're trying to hide, trying to be something that you're not or hide yourself and all that. You don't want to be revealed. And then we know masquerade parties normally have, well, you know, in its origin, it's related to orgias and all that, you know? And we've heard, well, I don't know, well, I've heard about the celebrity parties and all that type of stuff, you know what I'm saying? And they say all kind of crazy stuff goes down. But it's basically this stuff, you see what I'm saying? Like loose cloaks, you know, uh, masks with, uh, with like Mardi Gras and all that kind of stuff. It's all in the same family. So I'm just trying to get deep with y'all and I'm trying to give it to you quick, you know what I mean? Because I know a lot of people don't be having time to do all that, um, you know, following me through the actual process. So, all right, this is going to be the, the short video, you know. So now, uh, talk about masquerades and all that kind of stuff. All right, so now let's get down to the origin of the word domino. All right, so the origin of the word domino means lord or master. Lord or master. Huh. Ain't that something? So we, um, when we talk about Domino's Pizza, what are we saying? We say Domino's Pizza. Oh, you know what? And um, I don't know how knowledgeable you guys are about what they call in the Pizza Gate. The Pizza Gate, when they're dealing with these kids and sex trafficking or whatever, they, whatever it is, right? But it's called the Pizza Gate. And ironically, Domino means Lord and Master and all that. And it's dealing with the masquerades and witches and all this kind of stuff, right? All the so-called 10% or 1% or whatever. All the well-to-do people that's caught up in this bigger, in this big scandal, basically. You know what I mean? Like Soul Kitchen and all that, you know? Like a lot of people have been talking about that kind of stuff. Like it's really getting out there that these people are really into some stuff they don't have no business being into. And as we see in this time into the priests and everybody, as we definitely gonna see in a minute. For the ones hanging around, all right. But as well, as you can see right now, right? It's a the origin of the word domino is late seventeenth century from French, denoting a hood worn by priests in winter, probably based on the Latin Dominus, or Dominus, Lord, Master. Okay. So let's see what I got. Got a Dominus logo. Remember I was telling y'all that the one, like when we had all the dots on the Dominus, right? And say the uh, it's twelve. All the dots on the dominoes come up to be twelve, and one plus two is three. You see what I'm saying? So you see they got the one and the two. Like everything is symbolic, y'all. Everything is symbolic. They know that this means Lord or Master. They know that's what they mean. So I guess they saying they the Lord and Master over pieces. I guess that's what they're trying to say. You know, you gotta pay attention. All the codes, all the signs is around us. All right, so let me get this off here. So now we got Dominic Anno. Dominic Anno is, is referencing to like AD. You know, you got AD and then you got BC. So, AD means Anno Domini. And it reads, 
Excuse me, y'all. Okay, it says that, um, so Anno Domini means like the year of the Lord. And BC means before Christ. All right? So I'm just running through some um, things real quick, though. So you got Dionysus, Exodus, Exodus. And so to make a long story short, he the one to start time moving from zero. From year zero, basically, from uh, from um from one one AD, you know what I mean? So he the one did all the writing, as you can see, as it's saying here. And he uh, he rewrote a lot of stuff from Greek. It's a right here. I'm, I'm, I'm down here. All right, so it say he translated from Greek into Latin for one ecclesiastical canons, including the apostle um, the apostolical canons, the decrees of the councils of Nicaea, Constantinople, Chalcedon, uh, Chalcedon, and Sardis, Chalcedon and Sardis, and a collection of decretos of popes, Syracus, and Anastasius, too, whatever. But y'all see, my main point was, they had something to do with the Nicaean council, he, 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 he translated it from Greek into Latin. Right, it said from about 500, he lived in Rome, where as a learned member of the Roman Curia, right, he translated from Greek into Latin for a one ecclesiastical canons. So the Roman Curia comprises the administration institution of the Holy See and the central body through which the affairs of the Catholic Church are conducted. Um, it acts in the Pope's name and with his authority for the good and for the service of the particular churches and provides the central, all right? So basically, we'll let you know about some of this, blah, 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 blah. But main part, our main point is that it's dealing with the Catholic Church, stuff like that, and he was over the Catholic Church, and he was doing all the right for him, he was conducting the business for him, he was the man, you know what I mean, in the Holy See. Y'all see it's S-E-E. -E. Okay. You know, but um, yeah. Excuse me about that. Uh, so yeah, that's what it is for the most part when it come down to that. All right. So, and as you can see, he has on this cloak or whatever. You know what I mean? Because all clerks can wear the cloak or a cloak and all that. I'm just gonna run through these pictures, man. I got so much stuff, uh, stuff open. It don't make no sense. Now, remember, I was telling y'all about the pill for like the, the dots on the dominoes. You know, we're talking about the dots on the dominoes. We go back to us so y'all can keep up with what I'm talking about. Because I'm, be, I'm gonna be everywhere, but we're gonna be everywhere at the same time. You know? So pips, right? That's where it right here. That's why I got pilt from. Why not say pilt? Alright. For all you people that like receipts and all that, that's why I'm doing this. Cause because uh, I already know what's going on. I don't need the details for sure. But like we all know, it's a it's a matrix. And it's all about being the spider and not the web, you know what I'm saying? You, gotta, you don't want to be the fly. You want to be the spider for the most part, or y'all know, y'all know what I'm trying to say. You feel me? You want to be predator and not the prey. You want to be able to manipulate, be able to manipulate the game and not be manipulated, be manipulated by the game. And you gotta be able to have a choice not to play the game if you see. It's possible not to even play, but in most cases you will have to play the game. But if you don't know how to play the game, you will automatically lose. All right. So we got to pay attention. Like the people, uh, a lot of people have been talking about. We got to pay attention to the language. We got to pay attention to the language, and I'm glad a lot of people starting to pay attention to the language. All right. So pip, the fourth definition. Is a disease of poultry. 
or other birds cause the thick mucus in the throat and white scale on the tongue. All right. So when we're talking about these diseases, this corona and all that, there, they were saying that it come from a bat and all that, which is a bird. Oh, you know, but it's just a disease of poultry, meaning just meat, you feel me? Any kind of meat in particular, right? And it says it causes thick mucus in the throat. That's what they're saying, that it causes thick mucus and all that in your, th um, in your, uh, your lungs, which soften your throat, go to your lungs, and then drop down to the bottom of your lungs, and all this kind of stuff. But, okay, but y'all see where I'm going with this, right? So then, when you go down to the origin of people don't just run through all the stuff I just told y'all so y'all won't y'all know it ain't no cap so it's a in late middle English in middle Dutch that's where I got Dutch from and I was talking about Trump and all that when I was relating it to the pipe all right so Dutch Pippi properly from an alter uh, alter alteration of a Latin pituity or pituita I'm sorry slime in the late 15th century the word came to be applied humorously, this is the key part, humorously to unspecified human diseases. What? Hold on, wait a minute. It said to be applied humorously to unspecified human diseases. Okay? It say and later to ill humor. So we're dealing with sickness and all that kind of stuff, dealing with the pee pee and well. Pee pee. P P. All right, now, now uh, the word Dutch pippy, right? It was a Dutch word for pip, P uh, pituita. Remember all that, right? So now we get down here to uh, Piper. Okay, so four one. Let you know it's all matching up. Four one. All right. So it say pippy, oh Dutch pippy pip, all right, pituas, all that. So also can mean piper, of course, because it's the root, right? So now, let's go to piper. So piper is a bag pipe player. A person who plays a pipe, especially an interrent musician, all right? An interrent Musician, a person that plays the pipe. Okay, so you go, you go, uh, you gonna pay the, uh, you gonna pay the, wow. You know how people say, you gonna pay the piper. It must have used to be, you gonna, uh, you gonna play the piper. You gonna play the piper. But people say, you gonna pay the piper. So, oh yeah, you gotta pay the piper. You gotta pay the man. The piper just piped, he just, the musician just entertained. So, you gotta pay the musician. Wow. We automatically use that as a bad thing. You gonna pay the piper, you know what I mean? Like, like I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you back from doing what you did. You know what I mean? Like, look, it said right here. It said pay the piper, better consequences of an action or activity that one has enjoyed. You see that? It's a pay the consequences of an action. That's one part of it. That's how everybody look at it. Or activity that one has enjoyed. Right? Pay the pipe. Activity that one has enjoyed. Okay? So the a pipe the piper is a uh, entertainer. In, um, entertainer. So, so that's who Peter the Piper is. I don't know. I probably end up getting to it. I'll just go kind of run through this stuff quickly if I can. Not, not tear it too long. So let's get down to the Piper. Okay, got all that. So what do I have next? Uh, shit, I don't know why I got queer. I, I, well, I do know, but I wasn't ready to show you how that yet. But fuck it. Gotta show you why I got to queer. Got the freak. Yeah, I think I might be getting ahead of myself. Yep, 
Jag blir hel om det ser ut som en annan väst att jag säger Okej, det är Boris John Alone Turn them out, Gypsy Fuck it, fuck it, fuck it Let's do it Let's do it This ain't got nothing to do Nah, I gotta keep it on top So, I basically um, just explained everything to y'all about the domino deal for the most part let me sure I get this clarified. Oh, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. That's the next step. That's the next step. I don't know how. Okay, here we go. Here we go. All right. So this is called uh, a classic domino dress, right? Which y'all see. It's an old classic domino dress. Now, when they were talking about um, cloak and all that kind of stuff, this is a cloak. Let me show you. Hood worn in the winter, right? Look. Let's see. The cope, known in Latin as uh, pluvial, which is a raincoat or cap, cape, is a, allergic, um, a liturgical vestment. More precisely, a long mantle or cloak open in front and fastened at the breast with the um, band or claps. A coat may be worn by any rank of the clergy and also by lay ministers in certain circumstances. All right, so let's look at a few pictures of the cloak. So, all right, so I see it like this one right here. Cloak. All right, so we see that, right? Let's see what we're going with this. I might have a better picture of one. I don't know, but yeah, let's see. I know I did at one point. I don't see it no more though. The one I had for y'all. Oh, there it is. You see, right next to it, boom. See that one? See this one? That one, this one, um, that one. So you see it, right? So you see what it is. All right, cool. Now let's deal with that. Now let's see what a domino theory is. A domino theory is a theory that a political event in one country will cause similar events in neighboring countries, like a falling domino causing an entire row of upended dominoes to fall. Okay? So there's basically the domino effect. Domino theory and domino effect is the same. Okay? But the domino theory is the theory that a political event in one country will cause similar events in neighboring countries, like a falling domino causing an entire row of upended dominoes to fall. So is, is that like the fall of Babylon that everybody talk about? The fall that everybody gonna take and all this kind of stuff? I, I live in this country, I don't, I don't want it to fall. <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? And the way y'all talking about locking me down. I'm just being real. All right. So now let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's see what we got next. So it's the hood worn by the priests. Yeah, so we already know, know where we're going with that. So y'all notice we was talking about coke and caper. And all that kind of stuff you see. It's a long mantle, a cloak for clergies. And they were saying about liturgical. In one definition, they were talking about liturgical. Alright. So let's get back to liturgical. See what that means. Uh, allergical. Let's see what it says. Liturgical. Alright. Liturgical. So it's relating to liturgy or public worship. Relating to liturgy or public worship. 
All right. So we're dealing with ceremonies, rituals, solemns, sacramentals, heretics, churches, all right? Rituals and all that. So let's, let's keep it moving quickly. All right. So it's, it's um, liturgy plus al. I don't even know what this is. Okay. Al. Is forming adjectives relating to of the kind of right. It relates adjectives. It um, it denotes a verbal action. All right. So the main part of the word is liturgy. That's why they had it bro broken up like that. Let's get back to liturgy. All right. Okay, so liturgy is a form or formulary according to which public religious worships, especially Christian worship, is conducted. Okay, ritual, worship, service, ceremony. A religious service conducted according to a liturgy. Okay, say. The the um the Eucharist the Uch the shit one of the words again the Eucharistic the order the, the um the Eucharistic service of the Eastern Orthodox Church also called the Divine Liturgy okay Eucharistic that would sound like Eucharistic 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 However you want to see it. All right. It's a, in ancient Greece, a public office of duty performed voluntarily by a rich Athenian. A office of, um, a office duty. And uh, uh, it's a public office or duty performed voluntarily. By an Athenian. Which is the ancient uh, ancient Greece, uh, Greek, ancient Greek. So now, the origin of the word is mid sixteenth century via French or late Latin, from Latin, liturgia, public um, public service, worship of the gods. So the public is it could be a, it could be a public service. Okay, that's what for the churches and all that kind of stuff. But it's also used as worship of the gods, plural, okay? From minister, from public plus ergos, means working, working minister, okay? Working minister. So I'm just showing y'all that. So let's keep moving, keep moving. I'm gonna say right here. So liturgy again, is a um, uh, uh, ecrastic right, ecrastic right, a right or body of rights prescribed for public worship, a customary repertoire of ideas, phrases, or obs um, uh, uh, of services, like observations or whatever, you know, like looking. All right, let's keep going. Okay, the word right. Is a religious or other solemn ceremony, uh, ceremony or act? Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going, going down. Keep that moving right quick. Okay, right is like is um, Latin ritus, meaning religious or usage, right? Religious or uh, religious or usage. So when they say religious, it's really meaning usage, all right? But, hold on. So usage, you know, that could be you like you use it to help yourself or somebody use you. You see what I'm saying? They say the action of using something or the effect of being used, you see? See, either you use or being used when it comes to Christianity and stuff. All right, you see that? 
using or you being used. One of the two. Ain't no in between, Jack. All right? So that's what religious mean. It's usage. So we say religious, we really saying rituals, uh, rituals, or right. And basically when we saying rites, we saying liturgy. Uh, it's a uh, charistic right. So when you're saying right, you really say liturgy. So when you're saying religion, okay, it's liturgy, basically. All right, that's how I'm putting it together. All right, which I saw was wrong with it. Okay, now, Kappa. Kappa is a cape, especially as part of an ecclesiastical or academic garb. Ecclesiastic, uh, 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 ecclesiastical or academic garb. All right. So now, I don't know why I'm on spiritual for some reason. So, spiritual, spiritual, okay. It's a, a religious song of a kind associated with black Christians of the U.S., Southern U.S., and thought to derive from the combination of European hymns and African musical elements by black slaves. My bad, y'all. I didn't mean to slide that one on you. I ain't mean to slide that one on you like that there. Alright. But I think I gotta bring that bit about that. So let's get back to the Kappa deal. I'm trying to check out a Kappa right quick. Let this show a Kappa. I ain't showing the right kind of Kappa. There we go. There's a Kappa right there. But the same thing. Y'all know what Kappa's are. Most of y'all graduated. Alright, so let's keep going. So now we have um, palynology. So it's probably like what the hell you get palynology from. Let's get back to some business. I think that was in, what we got? Kappa. I'm trying to get Kappa, define Kappa. Let's get back to the definition. That's what I was on. Uh, okay. It said Kappa, now, plural, Kappa. Polynology, uh, polynology, okay, poly, um, polynology, the thick wall on the proximal side of the corpus of a polygram. Okay, it's about to get a little deep. So, y'all see where I got this word polynology from. So, this is what polynology is. So, polynology is like dealing with pollen, okay. They say the study of the study of pollen grains and other spores, especially as found in archaeological or geological deposits. The study of pollen grains and other spores, especially as found in archaeological or um, geological deposits. Right? Pollenology. Okay. Let's see what the origin of pollenology is. It means sprinkle. Okay. So now, this is what I want you to see about polynology. Y'all ready for this? Boom. What do we have here? Look at that. Look at this. Okay, let me show you this. Get to what I'm trying to really get to. Polynology. And it's showing how I wanted to show it. What I gotta pitch at? You can run, but you can't hide. You can run, but you can't hide. Something like this. Something like that one. Let's see if we can find another five. We're looking for another one that looks a lot similar to the one. Let y'all see what's going on. So, 
I think the um, the pollen is being attacked in our atmosphere. That's where I'm going with it. Everything has been attached to the pollen. You remember they saying that the bees been going extinct lately? I think the pollen is being intercepted or, you know what I'm saying, we putting artificial. I think that's how they're transferring this artificial allergies and stuff like that. What we call chemtrails is what I'm saying. I think the chemtrails are coming down like pollen. Y'all ever seen a whole bunch of pollen that seem like, man, like what the hell is all this stuff falling? That's that's the stuff that they doing. That's that looks like pollen. Right? I think they technology, you know what? I think y'all get it. I'm trying to get to the main picture. I'm trying to show y'all real quick. I'm trying to get to the main picture. Put up different on my cell phone, but y'all are still gonna see what I'm going with it when I finish. All right, let's see. Let's go down. Let's slow. All right, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and just deal with this picture. I'm gonna deal with this one. I'm gonna go ahead and deal with this one. All right, let's see. I like this one too. So now we see that picture. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Let's go ahead and do it. Corona. I ain't gonna spread up all right. Spread up all kind of wrong. But they gonna go to it though. They gonna go to it. They know what I'm trying to get to. Boom. Take that picture right quick. Me, they say uh, that bit, huh? Coronavirus. Coronavirus, all right? Y'all see that picture? Y'all see this picture? Y'all see that? Like this one right here? And it got some little too. But I think they don't really look to them. All right, what y'all see? What's going on right here? Y'all see this? Now, nah, let me show y'all something else. Let me show y'all something else right quick. I don't even know why they open all right. There we go. Let me show y'all something. I'm gonna put that picture up there for you. Let y'all know what we got going on. Yeah. Right here. Island grain. You see that? Y'all see this? Look. This is pollen grain. You see that? That's a pollen grain. And it look like this on this the smallest level. Like, you know, it look the same. Man shit. I'm telling y'all. I don't know what the fuck going on. Y'all see this shit? Look. Look at that. That look like the goddamn Corona right here. That's what it looked like. So it's the same type of shit. Look. Y'all see that? Now let's get back to the other picture of this thing. Y'all see this? Y'all see this? Boom. See the Corona? And you see the pollen grain? So we're going to just put the other one, put the other one in. Put the other one back up there for you. So Bill Gates and them got another one out there too. They look just like y'all already know. That's the one y'all used to seeing too. So y'all know y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Look, look at that. Look at this. That's what they're doing, y'all. Y'all see what's going on? That's what's being played with. Our atmosphere. Now, if there were spores, so spores is about the same thing. Like spores is dealing, it's like kind of like the pores of your body. So spores, you know what I'm saying? Well, that's the spores, basically how 
fellas get in. I ain't trying to get into no old math class and nothing. Sports like sperm and stuff too was dealing with the DNA and all that kind of stuff, right? You see, like the tree, you know, mold, the fungal, like uh, uh, the spores is what keep the fungus out. Just like your pores on your skin keep uh, bacteria out, right? So that's basically what it is about that. When, you come, when, when we're talking about spores, all right, this is what spores are, just so you know. Spores are a minute, typically one cell reproductive unit uh, capable of giving rise to a new individual without sexual fusion. Characteristics of lower plants, fungi, and protozoans. So that's the plants. What's biology, though? But I guess it's about the sweet. Of body of the plant. All right, so botany in a plant exhibiting um, alternation of generations, a hyploid reproductive cell which gives rise to a gametophyte. A gametophyte. All right, so microbiology and biology, a grounded, resistant form adopted by a bacterial cell in adverse conditions. Okay. Damn, bro. Damn. As I heard. My bad. stay on point. All right. So in microbiology, in bacteria, a rounder resistant form adopted by a bacterial cell in adverse conditions. All right. In adverse conditions. Resistant. Okay. It resists in adverse conditions. That means it fights back, of course, right? Everybody know what resistance is. You got to put up resistance when you don't be taking it when you don't want to be taken advantage of. All right. So now let's keep going. This is what I want y'all to see. Spores mean what? Sowing a seed. Spores mean sowing a seed. So, if we're talking about DNA tampering and all that kind of stuff, you know, like it has to enter into your spore. Like your, like your DNA is held within spores. Okay? And so your spores have to be penetrated in order to be extracted, all right? Something has to be able to clench onto it, you know, starve it out and take over, basically, all right? So the spores protect your DNA. So it's the sown, the, the seed is sown in your spore, all right? All right, so spore, <clears throat> it's the 19th century. 1800s, that's sporer, Greek from sporer, sowing, seed, right, to sow, all right, and we have to understand, too, that a lot of these words are fairly new, like this is the 18th century, I mean, 19th century, so it's like the 1800s, we got to be very mindful of that, you see what I'm saying, I think they got to switch the rules so you can see how they, they stamp, spell on top of it, you know, all right, let's see. So a pore, just like a spore, right? A spore is dealing with plants. A pore is dealing with you. A minute opening in a surface, especially the skin or integument um, of an organ uh, of an organism, 
through which gases, liquids, or microscopic particles can pass. All right, so it's letting you know, letting you know your pore is what's protecting you from diseases and stuff like that. You see what I'm saying? That's the last stop, basically. So it's the passage. The pore is the passage. So when it was, um, when it was said, you took the uh, something passage. I remember something about passage, like a metaphor or something like that. But I can't remember. But um, yeah, just keep going. So we're dealing with uh, pure while we're on pure. So let's go to the origin of poor. All right, so the origin of poor, it's the first definition of pure. And pure is look keenly on with difficulty at someone or something, right? Look keenly or with difficulty at someone or something. So it's like you're squinting your eyes, like they say squint. And uh, archaic definition is coming to um, view, appear, coming to view, appear. You know, show up, you know, be seen. Your pores cause you to be seen. All right. If it wasn't for your pores, if it, if it wasn't, if it wasn't for your skin, if it wasn't for the passage, right? You wouldn't be able. To, you wouldn't be seen. Right? You couldn't be seen. Now let's see what else I got, I got over. So fungal pore or spores. So listen, it's a, it's kind of key. It's a fungal spores can hijack human immune cells to spread infection. Fungal spores could hijack human immune cells to spread infection. All right, so it's letting you know, you got fungal spores that's protected. All right, so listen, I want y'all to check this out. This is pretty deep. So now the predator, right? We call them parasites. That's the predator, the one on the left. And the sun is basically neutral, right? But the sun hurts the predator and helps the, uh, the melanin, the ASAP melanin. All right? So you see how this chain of command go? It go from predator to sun, from sun to air, um, ash melanin. So it's a melanin protects spores from attack. Melanin protects spores from attack. All right. So the people that like to talk about melanin and stuff like that all the time, y'all already know what it is. All right. So just so y'all can see why all this is so important and so relevant. The universe is heating up. The earth is heating up. And the more the universe heats up, the, the harder it is for predators or parasites to survive. Okay? We have predators and parasites in this universe. And the sun is turning up on them. And they're starting to melt. They're melting. It's the melting pot. <laughs> so, I think it's a specific, uh, specific part of this article I wanted to read to y'all. Let's see. It's a pretty interesting article, article by the way. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I think it's right here. They say mold spores are frequently attacked in the environment by spore predators, such as amoeba that use other microorganisms as a uh, source of food. Oh, right here, sorry, huh? Right here. 
as a source of food. The melanin pigment of fungal spores generally slows down the digestive process and enables the spores to germinate and kill the predator. All right. So mold spores is fungal spores, all right? That means bacteria, bad bacteria, bad pathogens, all right? Are frequently attacked in the environment, right? They are attacked in the environment by soil predators. Now who are the soil predators? The melanin, the melanin is the, melanin is the soil predator, okay? such as uh, amoeba that use other microorganisms as a source of food, okay? They say the melanin pigment of fungal spores, okay? So melanin, well, I'm sorry, y'all. When I said first, when I said that the melanin was the um, amoeba, amoeba, I'm sorry, that's not right. Because melanin is inside all the, um, the spores. You understand what I'm saying? So it says soil predators such as amoeba that use microorganisms as a source of food, right? The melanin pigment of fungal spores, which is the key, is the bacterial spores, like I was telling you about, the non pathogenic generally slows down the digestive system process and enables the spores to germinate and kill the predator. Okay? That's what the melanin pigment do. The melanin pigment of the fungal spores generally slows down the digestive process. So melanin slows down the digestive process, right? Of the fungal spores so that it can, uh, so that the melanin pigment can germinate and kill the uh, the predator, okay? Which is bacteria, any intruder, okay? So that's the main thing I wanted to point out about that. I thought that was pretty deep. So yeah. Uh, yeah, we want the spores already. So that's spores. As you can see again, what kind of spores? Okay. So now, so we have it. I don't know what this is. So it's talking about DNA spores and all that. Okay, I, I think I remember the next I don't know what I think. Showing everything. But, okay. We'll work with it. But these are spores. You see what I'm saying? It says, um, score more spore DNA. It said, when thriving bacteria cells are threatened by harsh conditions and nutritional restrictions, the extreme stress can drive them into survival mode. Let me check this. Let me see a bit. So, uh, so y'all can see. Because I know sometimes you better read on your own. You might not understand what I'm saying. It say, when thriving bacteria cells are threatened by harsh conditions and nutritional restrictions, the extreme stress can drive them into survival mode, forming endospores. These bacterial spores can be exceptionally tough, remaining viable even after exposure to extreme conditions due to their resistance to en uh, enzymatic lysis. Desiccation, radiation, high temperatures, and chemical treatments such as disinfectants and Denterons, denterons. These resistances can be very challenging to metagenomic studies, as efficient um, as efficient lysis or uh, of spores is important to ensure 
an accurate representation of the microbial, uh, microbial profile of a sample. In, um, inefficient license of spores can lead to misrepresentation of the microbial profile. And very little DNA, uh, and very little to no DNA recovery from the spores. Okay, so it's basically letting y'all know. It's letting us know that it's hard to extract DNA from the spores. They want to be able to go right into our DNA, get something into it and rearrange some things but it's kind of hard for them to do it but they're still trying okay you see how they're saying it's so difficult and all that kind of stuff but i think they didn't kind of figured it out with this smart dust shit that they're trying out on us as guinea pigs see if it works all right so yeah let me not get too stuck in that so, pollen grains, if y'all check something out. There's something about pollen grains I want y'all to see. Okay, let's see, let's see. This, okay, yeah, that's what it was. Now, let me show y'all something. It's gonna get real deep. And it's almost over too, ladies and gentlemen. It's almost over. But this flower right here is special. I think I had went through all this information just to find this. You know, everybody talking about the problem. Oh, oh, Corona. Oh, uh, um, um, vaccine. And don't get the vaccine and don't do this and don't do that. Okay, it's cool. You know what I mean? Okay, now, if people still get sick or whatever, what are they supposed to do if they're not supposed to go to the doctor and stuff like that? We might have the solution, y'all. This hibiscus Rosa synthesis flower might be the solution to corona or any other chronic illnesses or whatever for that matter. And y'all remember how we got to this flower, right? We got to this flower through pollen grains. That's how we got through, uh, got to it. And we got to the pollen grains by Fuck all that. Fuck all that right now. I, I'll go back through that in a minute. Let me pull this back up. Bro. See, they already tripping. Yeah, that's, yeah, this is what I want y'all to see right here. The benefits of this flower. Check it out. It's a, well, aside from the mention uh, benefits of his of hibiscus at, um, at the top, right? Let's go back to the top. They say traditionally hibiscus has been used to relieve cough, deal with liver disorders, and reduce high blood pressure. So y'all, so people listen. So if y'all got liver problems, if you got high blood pressure, if you got coughs, okay, this flower will help you. It's um, like smelling it, it could be around you. And, um, they got different kind of teas and stuff, okay. Listen, it said it can be used alone or in combination with Indian gooseberry and coconut oil to promote hair growth and delay premature graying. Listen, y'all. So if you're graying prematurely, if you're losing hair and stuff like that, this flower can help you. It's like the it's like the same design type flowers for so like the same thing that they attacking it's the same thing they can actually cure you is what it sounded like to me now look at the other things that it provides the other health health benefits it provides it say aside from the mentioned benefits um hibiscus is also used for the following lowers cholesterol prevents the growth of cancerous cells. Do y'all hear me? Y'all hear how powerful this plant is, this flower is, man. That's why I mean, I'm sounding the way I'm sounding about it. And y'all saw the journey, if y'all follow me, 
how I even got here. And it's like, how in the hell did I get to this from starting from Domino? Okay? Real talk. I can't make this up. If I said I did it, I'd be lying. If I said I did it, I would be lying. So, all right, so let's keep going. So it say it prevents digestion. I mean, I'm sorry, goddamn. I say improves digestion, okay? Promotes blood circulation. Aids cardiovascular health. Helps treat urinary tract infections. Promotes weight loss. Helps treat kidney stones. Prevent oxidative stress. Oxidative is like oxygen. Oxygen stress, like meaning you can't bleed, breathe, like asthma. If I ain't mistaken, that's what that means. It's a Ayurveda recommends the use of extracts from the, it's extracts, right? From the hibiscus flower and leads to treat uh, menstruation disorders in women. Whoa. Y'all got menstrual uh, problem? This flower helps. It said these extracts also possess anti-fertility action. Okay? And, wow. Anti-fertility action. So all you women that's having a hard time fertilizing your egg or getting your egg fertilized, I guess you can't have children or something like that. This flower is anti that. It can help you. It can probably help you. Okay, and they say and have been used for contra receptive purposes, whatever that is. It say research research even suggests that hibiscus possessed anti cancer, anti inflammatory, antibacterial, and antidepressant properties. That sounds like the exact opposite of what's going on in the atmosphere right now. It's so it's like this disease going. It's called everything around us is causing cancer. It's causing inflammatory. It's causing uh, bacteria. It's causing depression and all that kind of stuff. And this flower might be able to help this problem. So many people have cholesterol problems, have blood, um, uh, high blood pressure, poor blood circulation, uh, uh, obesity. A lot of people have kidney problems, and liver problems. Man, come on, man. Let's be for real. And it even appears to be helping with um, asthma. This is a powerful flower, y'all. So it's a tea. It's a how to use hibiscus tea. Hibiscus can be made into a tea by, stepping the, by steeping the flower in hot water for a few minutes to benefit from the hair growth promoting properties. Soak a few hibiscus flowers overnight and the next morning. Squeeze them, collect the extract, and apply to the hair and scalp. Wash after a few um, after a few hours with warm water. Okay, now it has side effects. Let's check this out. Side effects of hibiscus. Hibiscus. Hibiscus is generally safe for use, but because it tends to cause the lowering of blood pressure, it should not be consumed by individuals suffering from hypertension. This herb is likely to cause drowsiness and its use must be avoided when driving or performing activities that call for enhanced and, uh, alertness. Hibiscus must also not be taken by persons who are um, who are on anti-cancer drugs due to a possibility of harmful interactions. Now, why in the hell with an anti-cancer drug that you get from the drugstore will have harmful interactions with a natural flower or plant? So, let you know that bullshit ain't, ain't, it, it, it. okay, y'all get where I'm going. They say, due to its anti-fertility action, hibiscus is prohibited for pregnant women. Okay, so it's anti-fertility. So okay, so it's, I'm sorry. So I was saying earlier that um, it helps you to get pregnant. So it it, it helps uh, it keeps you from getting pregnant. Is what it sounds like. 
Okay, it's an anti-fertility action. Okay, so it's a hibiscus is prohibited uh, for pregnant women as it may lead to miscarriage. All right, so if you're pregnant, do not take the hibiscus. So, a a false flag, everybody. My bad. I was getting a little too excited. Read it, reading too fast. Okay, so when it comes to the fertility action, no, do not take no hibiscus tea and stuff like that because it causes miscarriages. So, and you know what? That's something to think about, ladies. For you ladies that have, for the ladies that have miscarriages or are unable to fertilize, it may be this stopping it. Okay, think about it like, like that too. It could be this stopping the, the, the pregnancy process. Okay, so so that's a bad thing. All right, so, and this, that's why we're reading side effects. It's a hibiscus is prohibited for pregnant women um, as it may lead to miscarriage. Make sure you talk to your doctor before using hibiscus to determine if adding it, adding it to um, into your daily diet would be beneficial for you. So now, let's see. So that's a pretty important flower, though, y'all. That's the other way to try to say. At the end of the day, it definitely, it definitely have a lot of benefits. More benefits than I want to say more benefits than harm. You know what I'm saying? Because if you want to have a baby and you can't have a baby, this might be the problem. You see what I'm saying? Or something related to this. See, because it says related to the okra plant. All right? So that means you probably don't, don't need to eat okra if you're pregnant or if you're trying to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, if you're pregnant. Or even if you're trying to get pregnant, I guess, for that. Well, uh, for, uh, for the most part. But you might be okay, though, if you're not pregnant. You might still be able to get pregnant. But if it's... You know, if 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 if, if it makes you have a miscarriage and it's anti fertility, then I mean your egg can't be fertilized. You see what I'm saying? If you're eating anything in this family, you see what I'm saying? But it's gonna be a whole nother video that I might do a video on, as a matter of fact. I just might so it's a botanical name and family of hibiscus. Okay, botanical name. So let's see. And pull up the corona and how that looking like. And you know what? It might be a tech of fertility too. So I'm saying? Pollen grains, tech of fertility. The uh the flowers are not being fertilized because that's um attacking the pollen. There's all kind of stuff going on. But it's uh so, so this is <laughs> So it's not like that's dealing with um, sinuses and stuff. Yeah, I think for the most part, that's it though. For real, for real. Um, yeah, I think I done went through enough stuff, man. I kinda wanna get into a little bit more of this abyss stuff, for real. See what else I can find out about it. Okay, health benefits of the okay, hibiscus can relieve cough, liver disorders, reduce high blood pressure. Can you get that already? So I guess it's like a kind of rose too. It says good for your skin. Well, it says is it good for your skin? Let's see what it says. Hibiscus has a sort of magical reputation in skin care because it is a natural source of alpha hydroxy acids okay that's gonna be a key that's gonna lead me to some more research it's an AHA it's okay okay smooth looking skin uh, let's see hydroxy axis so this is acidic pro properties that help it kill stuff so it's not good everything is not alkaline alkaline, alkaline. So some acidic stuff is good to help you fight off stuff, obviously. Okay, let's see. Let's see, P 
purpose. Okay, just don't get used in skincare products, especially. Reduce discoloration. Say animal, it's a uh, group of animal and plant derived acids. Okay, animal and plant, you basically animals too. All right, so animal and plants. So, I wonder what kind of animals they come out of. See, because it kind of sounds like this stuff is like a miracle drug. You know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna. Uh, let me see something. I'm just gonna try something right quick. I just wanna see. Adrenochrome. A lot of people been talking about this adrenochrome and chrome. I wanna see what what's, what's in it. Chrome ingredients. Check this out, caps. Ingredients. So I get a home run before I get out of here. See if it match up with the adrenochrome some kind of way. Okay. They say adrenochrome is a chemical compound with the molecular formula produced by oxidation of adrenaline. Okay. Empirifrine. Okay, it gives you adrenaline. Oxidation product, right? Adrenochrome is an oxidation product of adrenaline. Okay, let's see some. Let's see some. Oxidation product of adrenaline. Oxidation is the process or result of oxidizing or being oxidized. So oxidize, oxidation. Oxidation sounds like ionization. Ionizing, oxidizing. Oxidize is combined or become combined chemically with oxygen. Combine or become combined chemically with oxygen. I'm telling y'all, man, it's all about the air. It's all about the oxygen you breathe. It's all about the ions, negative ions, positive ions, stuff like that. It's so like they're getting an extra dose of oxygen. It's like they, whoa, wait. Wait, wait, wait. So that means they're still in a good atmosphere? All right. Undergo or cause to undergo a reaction in which electrons are lost to other species, to another species. Undergo or cause to undergo a reaction in which electrons are lost to another species. Yes, 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 that's exactly what I'm talking about. So like with these new satellites and all that, right, with the 5Gs and all that, they taking the electrons out the atmosphere. They restricted it. So it's going to another species. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's causing us to lose oxygen. But that might be too deep going over a lot of our heads. So quit thinking out loud. Okay, but anyway, oxidize. The word oxidize came up because it was something else I saw. Yeah, you know, one of the definitions. It was saying something about oxidized. I can't remember which one it was. But I'm sure y'all gonna know. I go back through it myself, check it out later on, but I'm sure y'all probably remember reading something about oxidized or something in that family.
Okay, but um, all right. So I ain't never show the priest jackets. That's one of the main things I want to let y'all show. I want to let y'all see priest cloak. I spelled that wrong, but yeah, check it out right there. So y'all yeah, see the priest cloaks. And I like looking like the Grand Reaper himself. The Grand Reaper from the fucking sales. So y'all had dumb nose and all that messed up. So y'all all that stuff. It's Piper. Um, let's go back to the other now. Let's go back to Domino. Okay. So we all just we got to all this through Domino. So now Talk about the loose cloak. Talk about the mask. So let's go on mask right quick. Let's run through this. And we're gonna be finished. We find the mask. Turn the rush now. Slow down a little bit. No, I got to be about an hour plus nine. Damn it. Yeah. So, now, let's do this. They say a mask, right? The covering. You know, it covers the face and all that kind of stuff. I want y'all to see. Okay, we got Domino. So, we know Domino means mask. Okay, disguise, veil. Okay. So it's a, a covering for all a part of the face worn as a disguise or to amuse or terrify other people. Okay. All right. So that covering. Okay, got all that. Let's keep going down. Keep going down. Let's get the working right quick. I'll take the time to go read through all this when y'all get the chance. Alright, so now look. God damn. God damn. It's a mid 16th century from French, Mosque. From Italian, Mascara, Mascara. Probably from medieval Latin, Mosca, which Specta. But influenced by Arabic, Mascara, Buffoon. Okay, buffoon. So they know it's dealing with witch and shit, spectres. When I told y'all that the goddamn um the damn jacket, the priest and all well, I'm on them, I told y'all not. Yeah, I did earlier. But the priest and all that, the jackets and all that look like witches and the um and the judges and, and the priests and the clergies and the pastors and the ministers. Come on man. Come on, man. These are witches and vampires, and they don't even know it. They're casting spells. Witches and vampires casting spells. I ain't trying to throw nobody under the bus. I'm just calling it like I know it is. And it's up to you. You want to just keep doing it? I can't tell you what to do, what not to do. I ain't trying to tell you nothing. I'm just calling it like I said. And if you didn't know, now you know. If you did know, Cool, but I ain't know, and so that's why I'm putting it out. But y'all just saw what that meant, right? So let's go on back, get on up out of here again, get on back to where we was going to. So now, so that we know what mask are, you got the um, you know what? Yeah, let me do that first. Let me do that first. Let me go ahead and go to these images for mass real quick. Well, I thought it was going to be mass. Got rid of it out of one. Uh, anyway, well, let me keep on moving. Let me keep it moving. We know what masquerades is. We know about the masquerade parties and all that kind of stuff. And it sounds like uh, masquer masquerades. You know, during the Crusades, right? The, um, the Crusades, the Pope and all them, they was giving out the orders to go kill P 
people. Real talk. They was going, they was killing everybody. So it sounds like it's the massacre raid. The massacre, you know what I'm saying? You see how they blended it? Like the massacre raid, you know what I'm saying? Or the church queer aid, some shit. Yeah. All right. So it's a false show or pretense. That's, a, that's what a masquerade is. A false show or pretense. Deception, pose, act, front, back aid, disguise. See, that's an act. It's a show. The actors, the Hollywood entertainment. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Pretend to be something you're not. Or something or someone you ain't. All right. Which is mask and all that, okay? So, it's a mask, which we already know. Boom. So, let's check out the masquerade images for the ones that may not know. So, you see, you got all the masquerade images. Masquerade, masquerade. See, all the masquerades is dealing with orgies for the ones that don't know. The masquerades are dealing with orgies. Look, look at this shit. You see? You see? Yeah, it's supposed to be. Hold on. I thought that was somebody else. I thought that was um, Ellen. Y'all know Ellen? That's what I thought that was. But yeah, a lot of cultures are into the masquerades and all that stuff. Let me see. So you catch the symbols to where you know that um, they know that it's about orgies and all that kind of stuff. All right, let's see. See, celebrity uh, masquerades. Celebrity. Celebrity. Okay, check out some images right here. You see, we know what it is. We already saw, them. but they already showing the sexual aspect. Then you know what's going on. This is all about the orgies and all that kind of stuff. Let me see if I can scroll down to some more pictures where they're showing. That kind of vibe. Because, you know, a lot of them, they're casual, but a lot of them, they know what it is because they really get it down. You see what I'm saying? Look, they kissing. They're looking like they in love, ready to do whatever. You see what I'm saying? Let's see. You know, see all the feminism. We got the mask on there already. Man. All of them. You see all the stars. You see what I'm saying? Look at us with the net on our face. You know what I'm saying? A whole different ball game. She was like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be killing these bitches with my masquerade mask on. <laughs> Look at this shit. Look, we got the witch. You see, we was talking about witches and shit. You see what I'm saying? Look, celebrity Halloween uh, costumes, got witches and shit. Tell y'all, man. It's just because they use all the powers in such a negative way, B. That's why I be talking the way I'm talking. Because we know it's all energy and everyone has the right to it. But some people using it against us. You know what I'm saying? Especially keeping it from us. You know. Alright. So, yeah. Look, that look like a goddamn corona right there. Let's see what this shit is like. Look, look at this shit. What the hell is this? Let me this a little bit better. Can't really get too much bigger than that, huh? Shit, look at this shit. This shit right here look like Corona like a motherfucker, huh? Look like the same stuff we just got finished looking at. They say, um, need time for mystery at night, all inclusive with everyone. Say, top secret venue, Ariaya, got $87. What the hell is this? This look like, um, 
that Marina gun. Say live DJ special, okay, the uh, court down, the New Year Eve, masquerade, the 007 masquerade ball. I don't know. It looked like something for the celebrities. I don't know. I ain't trying to get too deep into that. But yeah, it looked like one of them, um, what they call it, one of them, um, the soul, soul, uh, uh, it said, it said gold and I too. It said the black tie, oh, excuse me. Okay, like the, um, soul cooking. Y'all know that lady, they be doing all the soul cooking, the soul cooking lady, eating babies and shit. Yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all yeah, know what I'm talking about, cuz. What y'all see? What's going on? How all this stuff connects in one way or another. Which always seems to amaze me. Okay. Like to go to the top and just make this shit smaller. Okay, but well, anyway, let's see what the origin of it is right quick. Yeah, we are already been through the origin of that one. So, yeah. But anyway, man. And I just want to show y'all <clears throat> on this word domino that I wasn't tripping and that it all kind of matched up, you see? You know what I'm saying? I don't want to stop my recording. That's why I don't want to press the uh, minus button. But check it out, though. It was talking about the denoting of the horn by the priest and the woman, probably based on Latin dominus, dominus, I mean, dominus, dominus. All right, Lord, Master. All right, so check this out. The word Dominique. Word Dominique. I just want y'all to see something. They say the term, the, uh, the term. Okay. They say the term Anno Domini is medieval Latin. It means in the year of the Lord. Okay. Fuck it. Hope it don't stop. But let's see. 